The world today, with its bustling cities, global trade routes, and shared languages, owes much to a key shift in human history. Long ago, our ancestors moved away from the life of hunter-gatherers who followed wild animals and gathered plants across open lands. Instead, they began farming, herding animals, and building permanent settlements. This change, starting about 12,000 years ago, allowed populations to grow and led to the rise of early civilizations. It brought inventions like writing, more advanced tools, and organized societies from Mesopotamia to ancient Greece and Rome. Yet one question has persisted. Who were the people who were the pioneers of human civilization? And where did their ancestors come from? Ancient DNA has finally offered the answers. To answer this, we look to the Southern Arc, a region curving from the Adriatic Sea through modern-day Turkey's Anatolian Plateau into the river plains of Iraq and Syria, and up to the Caucasus Mountains in Armenia and Georgia. This area served as a vital link between Europe and Asia, where farming first took hold around 10,000 BC, or around 12,000 years ago. Archaeologists have uncovered clues like decorated pottery and stone tools, but these left gaps in understanding the people involved, their family connections, and how groups mixed over time. Ancient DNA helps fill those gaps. By carefully extracting DNA from old bones or teeth, scientists can read the genetic code and compare it to samples from other times and places. This shows relationships between ancient groups, much like tracing a family tree. However, in the Southern Ark's warm climate, DNA breaks down quickly due to heat, and this makes it hard to recover. While cold regions like Siberia provided many samples, this area lagged behind. The Southern Ark project marked a turning point. Led by geneticists at Harvard University, in partnership with the University of Vienna and others, it involved more than 200 experts from 20 countries. Over four years, they examined thousands of skeletons from 150 sites, from Croatian caves to Iranian hills. They focused on the petrus bone in the ear, which preserves DNA well. In total, 777 samples yielded enough DNA, thanks to improved methods like enzymes to remove dirt, filters to capture genetic material, and machines that read millions of DNA pieces quickly. These genomes were compared to over 3,000 ancient and 2,000 modern ones, focusing on key markers. Dates from carbon testing placed samples from 10,000 BC to 1700 AD. This effort yielded data that revealed population movements. The results form a clear timeline of how groups mixed in the Southern Arc, starting with the Neolithic period from 10,000 to 6,500 BC, when farming began. Earlier views suggested farming started in one spot in the Fertile Crescent and spread out. However, recent evidence shows a more complex process, with Anatolia actually serving as a central and partly independent hub for the origins of farming. This is based on archaeological evidence of early plant and animal domestication at sites like Sayonu Tepesi and Bankuklu Tarla, where charred emmer wheat grains and sheep bones from between 9000 BC and 10,000 BC show the first signs of selective breeding and herding enclosures alongside communal structures, which is evidence of organized labor for cultivation. The DNA results show two main waves of migration into Anatolia, the center of early farming. The first migration around 9500 BC or 11,500 years ago came from the heart of Mesopotamia, the region between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, DNA from early Anatolian sites like Bankuklu Tarla shows that these first settlers carried a 50-50 genetic blend, half from Levantine hunter-gatherers and coastal foragers who lived on the shores of the eastern Mediterranean, and half from pre-Mesopotamian groups tied to the Zagros Mountains. These migrants carried unique maternal lineages, called mitochondrial DNA haplogroups, genetic signatures passed from mother to child through the mitochondria. One of these, haplogroup N1b, still appears today among people in the Levant of the Near East, showing an unbroken maternal lineage. When these early farmers reached Anatolia, they met the region's locals, who were epipaleolithic hunter-gatherers, deer-hunting foragers from caves like Karain. These locals carried distinct Western hunter-gatherer ancestry and Y chromosome lineages, passed from fathers to sons, like I too, common in prehistoric Europe. From this blending emerged the early farming societies of Northwest Anatolia, such as the Barson culture, Genetic models show they were roughly 60% Eastern farmer ancestry, a mix of Levantine and Mesopotamian, and 40% local Anatolian hunter-gatherer. These groups became the foundation for settlements like Tzatelhoyuk. These early communities irrigated small wheat plots by hand-dug channels, raised sheep for wool and felt roofs, and traded obsidian from Cappadocia's volcanic outcrops. It helps here to understand the difference between ancestry percentages and haplogroups. The percentages describe the overall blend of ancestry, how much of a population's DNA came from different source groups, like mixing two large populations together, 
Haplogroups, however, represent specific lineages carried by individual men or women who took part in that mixing. The second wave, around 8,300 BC, brought pottery, clay pots for cooking and storage, from the Levant. These migrants added more Levantine genes. DNA shows a new mix, about 45% Levantine ancestry, 25% Mesopotamian, 10% Caucasus hunter-gatherer, and 20% local Anatolian. This means that contact with groups from the Caucasus Mountains, people adapted to highland forests and ibex hunting, caused the appearance of the Caucasus hunter-gatherer ancestry. Maternal haplogroups like J1C, commonly found in the Middle East, particularly the Levant, and also in Southern Europe, like Greece and Italy, with some presence in North Africa and Central Asia, appear. This shows that women actively had a role in spreading knowledge, possibly carrying seeds and tools along trade routes. Women's lineages, like U5 and K, found in Europe, West Asia, and parts of Asia and the Near East, show that both local and incoming women joined these new farming societies, suggesting genuine cultural fusion rather than conquests, which were usually male-dominated endeavors. The story the DNA tells is not one of invading armies of men, but of families moving together. The women's lineages are just as diverse as the men's, which suggests a picture of communities, not just conquerors. From 5000 BC, the Copper Age, and by 3000 BC, the Bronze Age, the long genetic and cultural evolution that began with these Neolithic farmers had transformed the Southern Arc. Across the region, people were now building large cities, writing symbols on clay tablets, and organizing into complex societies. In Mesopotamia, these farming descendants had already given rise to the Sumerians, builders of Uruk and inventors of writing. In Anatolia, early cities like Troy and Hattusa had taken shape, while to the southwest, the first Aegean and Minoan cultures emerged, trading metal, pottery, and ideas across the Mediterranean. During the Bronze Age, from 3000 to 1200 BC, these ancestries shaped the great civilizations of the region. The Mycenaean Greeks, known from Linear B tablets at Pylos, had roughly 75% Anatolian Neolithic, 15% Caucasus hunter-gatherer, and 10% steppe ancestry. By the time of the Roman Empire, from 200 BC to 500 AD, Anatolia had provided many migrants to Rome. By 100 AD, about half of Rome's population carried Anatolian ancestry, modeled as 50% Anatolian Neolithic and 40% Levantine. This shows that the development of civilization wasn't the work of a single people or invention, but the result of thousands of years of human connection and mixing. The DNA reveals how, from the initial beginnings of shared roots and intermarried families, the foundation for human civilization was laid from the combined ancestry of foragers, farmers, and herders who made the Southern Ark their home. As more studies sequence ancient DNA from across the Middle East, Anatolia, and the Balkans, the picture of how civilizations formed and mixed in this Southern Ark will continue to sharpen, revealing not just who these ancient peoples were, but how they shaped the genetic and cultural foundations of the world we know today. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, you can like, subscribe, and leave a comment below sharing your thoughts or any questions you have for us. Farewell.